Hello and welcome to the Beniverse, the place where we review movies. And for my first review on YouTube, we are talking Fast and Furious 9, the ninth installment in the Fast and Furious franchising starring Vin Diesel. And boy, oh boy, what a movie. Oh my goodness. I have a guilty pleasure in admitting that I actually quite enjoy the Fast and Furious franchise one through eight some of them obviously i don't enjoy as much the second and third one i think are rather weak but i think since dwayne the rock johnson joined with fast five i think they've embraced the stupidity and corniness of these films and have really just gone with over the top crazy action and does that stop in fast and furious nine no it does not that same level of adrenaline action is present except there are some differences. We do lose cast members like Dwayne The Rock Johnson, like Jason Stahem, and we're centered around the character of Vin Diesel, and we are introduced to a new character uh, played by John Cena, which we find out is actually Vin Diesel's brother in the movie. And listen, I'm not here to trash on the Fast and Furious franchise. Again, I think they're actually quite enjoyable films, but To be honest, I did not enjoy Fast and Furious 9. And let me preface that by saying I saw this film in a 4D theater. And 4D, for anyone who does not know, is it's 3D, but with some added elements of moving moving the chairs. You get lights flickering on and off. You get water sprayed at you and all that. And it was a two and a half hour experience, which... I thought would only make this film better, but not only did it make the film worse, it also made the issues I had with the film more pronounced. And let's just get into it. And I always like to start with the positive here at the Beniverse. So I want to talk about what works in this film. And there is actually quite a lot that works in these films because they understand what they're supposed to be. Some of that is the action is over the top ridiculous and they embrace that. The actors seem to know that they are going for the jokes in the action. The heist scenes, the driving sequences, the stunts they're doing, they all have this level of camp to them and humor about them that we as an audience allow ourselves to accept this ridiculousness because the film knows it's stupid. And some people might not like that, but as someone who's been a fan of 80s action films where or grew up with action stars like Schwarzenegger, like Stallone, like Dwayne The Rock Johnson, this largely works for me because it, oh, it doesn't take itself too seriously in these moments, these action sequences. So there are positives like that. The humor between the characters and the characters' dynamics are actually largely positive uh, with the characters played by Tyrese Gibson and Ludacris standing out and the character uh i hope i'm pronouncing her name right natalie emmanuel from uh game of thrones she's uh daenerys's servant in that show she does this role really well they have this good back and forth uh comedic beats together where they're throwing jokes and they're embracing the craziness of the stunts and the script tries to actually push this like they're in on the joke. There's with Tyrese Gibson's character, he has this moment throughout the film where he actually truly believes they're immortal and goes through the events of the past Fast and Furious films and pokes fun at it, pokes fun at the fact that they are seemingly invincible. And it the jokes largely work, but it also now starts to address the issue that I have with this film, where the film understands what it is but it almost seems to enjoy being dumb and that is not an inherent issue with the film but what does become an issue is when the film revolves around the idea of how can we make audiences think wow this is just over the top crazy and fast and furious 9 does struggle with this it does struggle with this feeling of, wow, what is, going, what is going on? What is happening? And a lot of this revolves around, and I'm sorry to say it, 
it's the character played by Vin Diesel, Dom Toretto. And it's the issue that I have with this is that Vin Diesel doesn't seemingly understand what movie he is in. He's taking this film way too seriously as an actor. He, the core theme of this movie is family. And he brings that in by talking, uh, but not by talking, but by introducing this character played by John Cena, who we find out is his younger brother. And there's this past between them uh, with their father, with an accident that happened that basically makes these two brothers estranged. And within this ridiculous nature of the film, there is this supposedly deep, heartfelt relationship that we're supposed to feel and connect to. But the problem is, it's just not conveyed convincingly. The these two actors in particular, John Cena and Vin Diesel, play these roles way too seriously and don't embrace the fun of what the franchise is at this point. Take this and compare it with the last film in the Fast and Furious installment, Hobbs and Shaw with Jason Statham and Dwayne The Rock Johnson. These two are polar opposites. And while they still have those same themes about family in both, one of them is able to do it in a buddy cop comedy kind of way where it's this juxtaposition between this big guy and this little guy. And they're both able to kick ass and continue. However, with this film, you have the issue that none of that heart and silliness feels realistic or convincing because one, these actors just don't have much chemistry together. It doesn't, you don't get this feeling that Vin Diesel and John Cena are close together. And that comes across in the film. And that hurts the film because you just don't buy the central plot of the story. And is it ridiculous to talk about story in the Fast and Furious franchise? Of course, it's inherently silly because these films are inherently silly. However, it is important to address it because some of the previous films have actually been able to touch these scenes and hit them with poignant, poignancy. For instance, take Fast and Furious 7 with, uh, where we lose Paul Walker in real life and then have to deal with the loss of him in the film. They are able to handle those moments with not just dignity, but with kindness towards the characters, with respect towards those characters, and with actual heart. In this one, it just feels like they wanted to add John Cena in the film and didn't know how to add him in, but they wanted to keep this core value of family going on. But yes, so is there a lot of issues with the Fast and Furious 9 franchise? Yes, and I talked about how I saw this in 4D and I really can't talk about this film without going into detail about the 4D because this does raise where I have my problems with this film is seeing it in 4D really highlighted some of the issues that I had with this film. So let me just set the scene. You're in this chair. If you've ever done Star Tours at Disneyland, think something like that. You're in a chair that moves around, that moves left and right, back and forth, can kick up a little bit, is jumping. You're not uh, strapped in, but you are like kind of protected in. It's a little bit of a smaller chair, so you're not just like flying around everywhere. And for the first 25 minutes, this gimmick is really cool. And it kind of feels like you're on a roller coaster for about the first 20 minutes, which is great. Until you realize that the movie is two and a half hours and is way too long. And 4D really just showed how long the movie is, because within 20 minutes, I got sick out of my mind. Uh, being in the theater and you're just thrown around left and right up and down getting jerked one way and back and my back's hurting and everyone's laughing but at the same time you have this like pit drop feeling in your stomach like I wish I took duranamine before going in and it's just this absolute mess of an experience one that I quite didn't enjoy and I'm talking about issues that you now have with the film besides the fact that this film is two and a half hours in length its action becomes repetitive when especially when you're sitting in there and the seats are reacting to the action and trying to mimic it you realize how long those car chase sequences go because you're sitting in a seat that now 
moves like you're in a car. So you're getting jerked left and right when Vin Diesel drifts or you break really suddenly. And you realize how repetitive these motions are and how repetitive they are in the film. And you just realize how long they are. And so I'm in the theater and I'm getting sick out of my mind. And I end up uh, leaving the theater, getting sick four times on my way home. And it's just, I, I don't want to bash the 4D experience for this film because I'm sure people do quite enjoy the 4D experience. But while watching it, it just showed me a few things about the Fast and Furious franchise. One, how long this film was and how much of it could have been trimmed. Two, how repetitive the film was because you saw a lot of the action sequences, which Justin Lin directed this, who has done previous Fast and Furious films. And the action in this feels really repetitive because it is a lot of that just slow-mo driving or watching a character drift or shift into different gears, or break really hard. It's those motions over and over again. And like I said, you really got that captured in 4D because it's you're just feeling it. So it, every, you're feeling the action, which it loses some of that kinetic feeling when you're in 4D, but it also just kind of showcases the film itself is kind of losing that kinetic energy. What else is there with 4D? So you're you're losing, you have the issue with the time. You're now having some of the issue with the action. You also realize how, I guess, spaced out the action is at times where it's just like you're going there for like 20 minutes and the chairs are not moving. And you're kind of just like, wow, this is a really long time, this downbreak between the action and uh, trying to tell the cohesive story, which is another interesting thing where you're just like, you're sitting there and you're like, huh, there is a lot of downtime in this movie. And then with that also, there's also a lot of times where there's just too much action scene after scene after scene after scene where it's just like action, 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 action. It's like, why aren't we breaking this up? So there's these sequences in the film where it's like a five minute action scene broken up by like 15 minutes of dialogue broken up by a 10 minute action scene. And then there's other scenes where it's just five minutes of action, five minutes of action, five minutes of action, just back and forth, back and forth in a row. And it's just like, it's too much at too fast and pun pun intended i guess and that is a problem with it because it just doesn't feel like this film's well paced it doesn't feel like this film's well written which again well written in a fast and furious what does that really mean it doesn't mean anything except that it's just uh should be more well should be more cohesive in its storytelling which it is just not it just it literally just is not a well-told story it it's not that it's that's another issue, actually. I'm going to bring that up. It should be a really simple story about Dominic Toretto facing off against his brother, but it becomes this global heist spy film, which too many callbacks from previous films that we just don't remember who those characters are, too many references to other characters or other installments in the franchise, too many just reliance on a history of cars of driving, of uh, race, uh, uh, what's it called? Street car driving from like the first film. Just, it's a lot of these throwbacks and it's a lot of reliance on remembering things that we don't have to remember. And it is just a lot of just tropes of spy films, tropes of action films all thrown into it. And it has this confusing like global plot where it's going from this country to this country and it's going back and forth and the characters are divided and half the characters are here half the characters are there another group is up here in this other country and it's just like there's no sense of uh where what's going on who's where and how they get to interact with each other and how they get to each other so fast it's just everything's kind of just happening in the audience because it has to accept it and at some point you just don't I wish they had just simplified the story and said, they're going here to get this from their brother, uh, from Dom's brother. And then when it fails, they have to go this way and go to this country and do it instead of having to go through like 10 different countries all in the span of 20 minutes, because it just makes it muddy and confusing to follow. And like I said, with that 4D experience, you just really get it because you're like, jump, it literally, your chair's jumping back and forth. So you're just like, you're feeling that, disconnect of what's going on so ultimately fast and furious 9 is a fun enough time if you're into these movies there are certainly some jokes that are enjoyable there are certainly some over-the-top action which 
you just watch and you're like, this is so stupid and ridiculous that only this film could deliver it. And only these actors could do this in such a way that makes this enjoyable. There are certainly those elements. And if I'm sure if you've enjoyed every other installment of this franchise, you're going to find fun out of this. As someone who likes these films, but doesn't love these films and certainly doesn't find Vin Diesel the best actor and thinks he should not be the main starring guy and he really needs a strong supporting cast. This It just doesn't come to play fully. And I think that is really on the faults of Vin Diesel and John Cena. John Cena, an actor who I also quite enjoy. They're just, they feel like they're in a different film. They feel disconnected to the ridiculousness of it. And it feels like they're trying to do this family drama in this ridiculous Fast and Furious movie. So overall, this movie has its fun but it is certainly not a good movie. And 4D is terrible. Uh, I'm sorry to those who love it. Uh, If you can handle it for two and a half hours, more credit to you. I could never, and I will never do this again. But yeah, Fast and Furious 9. Uh, If I had to give it a review, I'm going just four out of 10. Just, it doesn't hit it. Two out of five, I guess you could also say. I do five stars, so I don't know why I switched to 10 real quick. But I'm going two out of five stars for Fast and Furious 9. And yeah, so this is my review channel. Follow me on the Beniverse on Instagram and Twitter. Follow me at bensofthemovies.com. And yeah, just check me out. And if you like this video, like and subscribe. And more videos are coming out soon to the Beniverse. So thank you guys for listening. Have a good day. Take care. Bye.